So you're thinking about moving to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Well, hold on. It's not all rainbows and butterflies here in Pennsylvania. And in this video, we are going to be breaking down the reasons why, especially if you're coming from places like California or New Jersey, New York, into Florida, the DC, Northern Virginia area. These are areas we're working with people all the time. What you should be prepared for if you are moving to the Lancaster area. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. And if you're looking to learn everything there is to know about Lancaster, Pennsylvania and the surrounding communities, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. We're making video content all the time, all things Lancaster and the surrounding region. And we want you to be the first to get your hands on these new videos that are being produced. So again, thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the alarm bell as well. My name is Matt Moore with The Moore Group. We are a real estate team based right here in the beautiful Lancaster, PA. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the things that you need to be prepared for if you are going to be moving to the Lancaster area. And we're helping people all the time who are moving to relocating within right here in Lancaster. And if that's you, we'd love to help you. We honestly love having these conversations all the time. And we are having these conversations, whether they be through text, email, Zoom call, phone call, it doesn't matter. We are getting connected with a lot of people just like you. And we'd love to get in contact with you to talk about your next move right here to the Lancaster area. All right, let's jump right into the video and talking about the things about Lancaster that you need to be prepared for if you're moving here because it might be a little different than where you're coming from. But like I said in this video, we're going to cover some of the negatives here about the Lancaster area. It's kind of along the same lines of that pros and cons video. And again, we made a lot of content about what makes Lancaster so great. This video is a little bit more about what are some of the negatives about this video, depending on where you're coming from and your context. And the first thing we're going to be talking about is the weather. And it is something that I can talk about not only as a person to person, but at least on a little bit more of an expertise kind of a level, because before I got into real estate, I used to work as a TV meteorologist. That's right. I worked as a weatherman at the local TV station right here in the Lancaster area. Did that for eight years. Absolutely loved it, but it was time to do something different. But along those lines, it helped me see what was going on, not only just here in Lancaster, but across the region when it comes to weather. One thing you should know about Lancaster and across Pennsylvania in general is, well, Pennsylvania is really a four season state. So if you live in Florida, this is totally different than what you're used to, even in Texas. But if you live around New Jersey, New York, you're a little bit more familiar with this in, in the fact that you can have varying degrees of weather from day to day. And in particular in Pennsylvania and in Lancaster, that weather can change from hour to hour. There's an old saying there that for people that live in Pennsylvania, if you don't like the weather where you are, just wait a minute because it is certainly going to change. And that's what really we see here in Pennsylvania all the time. Of course, in the winter, we can get those big snowstorms. They're called nor'easters. They run right up the mid-Atlantic coastline and they dump a lot of snow when they get cranking here. In fact, here's some video that uh, we took personally. This was back in 2016, where over two feet of snow fell in 24 hours where we were living here in the Lancaster area. So it does happen, although it does not happen all the time. So you do get some big snowstorms. Um, last couple of years in terms of this winters have been actually really lackluster in terms of snow. A couple of little dustings, maybe an inch or two here and there, but otherwise it's been very, very, very weak in terms of snowfall. But where we have seen some instances are these cold spells that come down, especially, uh, you may have seen it if you watch the national media, they call the polar vortex, right? It comes out of Canada, it rotates on through, and typically in Pennsylvania, we do get a shot of cold air, but it usually does not linger too long, at least here in Lancaster. So yes, we can have wind chill values down below zero for a day or two in the winter. It's not uncommon to have that, uh, but usually it doesn't stick around. We see things moderate generally after a couple of days and returns right back to what is considered normal. On average, the coldest it gets is around 38 for a high. If you look at those average numbers and about 22 for a low temperature. And then in the summer, it can get up into the upper 80s for those average highs, even maybe even the low 90s. Uh, but it is something in the summer, a lot of people don't realize when they move to Pennsylvania or in Lancaster area that it can get really humid here. In fact, it can get more humid here in Pennsylvania than it can in places like Florida. And when you talk about that dew point temperature, that's what really what makes you feel that humidity. Yeah, we can see those numbers even higher here than say Orlando, Florida, Miami, Key West, all those places. It can truly feel quite tropical here at times during the summer. Now again, 2023 recording of this video, so far we're into the mid to late part of June and we really haven't had 
that much of the heat this summer. So it really just depends on the pattern that sets up. But one thing you can bet uh, for sure is that we do get all four seasons. We do get the winter cold, some snow. We get the spring, nice temperatures, a little bit of some rain showers, and of course the pretty colors as the flowers all start to bloom. Summer, it can get hot and it can get humid. And then in fall, of course, it starts to get crisp and dry and cool. And that's when we see the fall colors and the leaves start to change. So Yes, yeah, the weather can turn on a dime. It's varying and it can change varying in a day's span. But at the same time, that it lends to a lot of people actually liking it because of the fact that it does change. It's not hot and humid every single day with a chance of thunderstorms like my friends in Florida. If you're watching this, you see this, you feel this, you know it every single day. So again, the weather is definitely a component of it and it does change rather wildly here in Lancaster. Next up on the list is something that I've talked about in some of my other videos. If you've been a follower of this channel, you would probably have already heard me speak about this, but it's that country smell. And what I mean by that is Lancaster is, while it is, it has a city itself that of about 150,000 people, the county has over 500,000. It is very heavily surrounded by agricultural areas, including big swaths of farmland. And that goes as far as the eye can see in some of the outlying locations here in Lancaster County. Now, there's a couple of good things about that, and of course there's bad things about that. When you're surrounded by farms and you get into that spring, even to this early summer time frame, the farmers all like to spread the fertilizer, and that many times is manure. And what happens with that is sometimes it can be timed on some of the same days or the some same week spans because the farmers wait for the weather to be appropriate to do that. And generally speaking, the farmers are all on the same page with that. And sometimes there are times where the smell can get very, very strong with that manure. Now, I've had a lot of clients that we've worked with before that have been asking the question, is this something that lasts for a week, a month, and so on and so forth? The answer is it lasts for about a couple hours or maybe a day. That's about it. And it happens maybe a couple of times a year. So it's not like it's all the time it smells like that. And guess what? Here's the flip side to it too. If you like farm fresh produce, if you like cheap vegetables, cheap fruit, and especially in this day and age where inflation is making everything insanely expensive, you can go to one of the many farmers markets that are scattered around, even roadside stands here in Lancaster County. You can get farm fresh produce, the best you've ever tasted, and for half, if not less, the price than you would pay for the same thing at the grocery store. A lot of the grocery stores too also stock some local produce that have been in the area being locally grown. And so for that factor, yes, you do get the flip side of it too, but sometimes that smell can get pretty strong. That's why they make recirculation in the car's air conditioning, right? You can at least help to alleviate that a little bit. And if you just kind of stay inside, it's not all that bad. As someone myself who does look, live next to a farm, we actually appreciate that because again, it's part of the agricultural. It's what makes Lancaster, Lancaster. And it's what we love about this area. All right, next up on the list is the traffic. And if you're familiar with Lancaster, you know this already, but there are several north to south corridors that run through Lancaster and down into Lancaster City, and especially up into the northern part of the county that tend to get very, very congested depending on certain times of the day. There's also Route 30, which runs east to west across Lancaster County. It tends to be rather much more of a freeway than a highway uh, with zero stoplights, especially as you get to about Lancaster City. Beyond that, get, get more into hotels and Dutch Wonderland and the outlets and all that kind of thing with some stoplights. But you can face a lot of traffic here in the Lancaster area. In this time of year, spring, summer, fall, the tourism industry is hot. On top of that, you've got a lot of uh, Spooky Nook sports complex and a lot of conventions, and a lot of people coming to this area for a number of different types of things. And not only that, but of course the residents and Lancaster being a place that is growing rapidly, we are seeing the signs of that, have been seeing that for really the last five to 10 years or so where traffic has continued to get worse. Now I'll say this, that it appears to be that these townships and on the county and state level are responding to it, but they're always responses and they're always reactive instead of proactive. And what happens is you tend to get this congestion that leads to making a decision to make it better, but it takes years to get there. For example, the Centerville Road project that's happening right now, right across the Route 30 corridor, it is a giant mess over there. But when it's done, it is supposed to alleviate a huge blocking point that is here in Lancaster County. Now, another place that you should probably avoid certain times of the day is the Belmont Shopping Center or anywhere around there because of the fact that the traffic can just get absolutely horrendous. I don't know what it is about Chick-fil-A. I like it, but I don't, I'm not going to wait for 45 minutes in a drive through for it. But there are some times where that Chick-fil-A at the Belmont Shopping Center has cars wrapped around the building, out into the street, out onto Fruitville Pike, and it clogs everything up. 
And when those times happen, it can lead to gigantic slowdowns along Fruitville Pike in these areas. So just keep that in mind. Be aware of that. There are some traffic. Now, as you get familiar with it, you move to the area, you start to figure out the times and the dates. And there's a lot of back roads that you can bypass some of these uh, more major roads in the area where you can find your way around these congested areas. So that's something to keep in mind. You can get around it. It's not like a be all end all. And you will get very familiar with these normal places where you can bypass it very quickly here if you live in Lancaster. All right, next up on the list of something that's a negative about this area is while we have close proximity to the big cities of Interstate 95, that would be New York, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., and they're all within a driving distance, we don't have the big city attractions that some of those other areas have. For example, professional sports teams. Not here in the Lancaster area for sure. We do have the Lancaster Barnstormers, which is a small little field baseball team, and, and they are great. I mean, it's a fun to take a family out for a night, and um, you know, Dollar Dog Night's a great time there. Dollar Draft Night's a fun time at the ballpark. They do fireworks during home games after the game is over. Just a lot of fun in general to go to a Barnstormers game, but it's not anything like the level or the caliber of professional baseball. On top of that or beyond that, there's not really much else to consider in this area beyond some minor league types of teams. Hershey Bears is a hockey team that's up there in the Hershey area, something you can check out. But you really have to go to the big cities if you want those big city attractions. Another example would be something like a Top Golf, where it's a you know, state-of-the-art driving range facility. You have to go all the way to King of Prussia now to be able to access that. It's about an hour and an hour 15 away from the area. So that's sort of a knock on Lancaster. While the population continues to grow and certainly does support some big city attractions that we see across, again, some of these major metropolitan areas, at this point in time, and maybe it's just, uh, you know, we're gonna see that catching up. At this point in time, it's just not there. The good news and the flip side to all that is those big cities, they are just a short drive away. I should say short, maybe an hour or two, three hours, depending on which city you're going to. So if you do want to get into some of those big city attractions, you can, and you can make it a day trip. You don't have to spend the night. You don't have to book a flight. You can get there. You can take the Amtrak to some of these big cities. You can drive there. So really the options are there for you. It's just not here, really localized here in the Lancaster area quite yet. Next up on the negatives here in the Lancaster area has to do with money, has to do with taxes in particular. And we're going to call out one tax out of all of them that's really quite high compared to some of the surrounding states. That is the school tax. And this is more of a broad general Pennsylvania statement than it is here in the Lancaster area. Now, when you compare places like Maryland and Delaware and even states out west, it, you know, sometimes people come here and it's a little bit of a kind of a shell shock when they see that tax number. Um, you know, I grew up in Maryland for a period of time before moving here and coming to college in the Millersville area of Lancaster County. So, you know, my parents, I remember them thinking about moving into the Pennsylvania area and they decided not to because of those school taxes. That is something to consider. In Pennsylvania, there are three taxes you have to pay when you get to the Lancaster area, something to be aware of. That is your local, your county, and your school taxes when it comes to buying property here in the Lancaster area. Now, local and county run on a January 1st through December 31st, but school, school is billed in August, and that is the big one. And on a $300,000 to $400,000 house here in the Lancaster area, that can range anywhere from about $2,500 to $3,500 per year. Divide that out by 12 months and you can kind of get the ballpark numbers. I'll say this, you can get all of the tax information for any listing that you find online, generally speaking, and then those numbers are usually pretty accurate. And I'm a glass half full kind of guy, as you've probably been able to tell in this video so far. But the flip side of that is that Pennsylvania schools generally tend to be pretty good. Uh, a lot of funding going to the schools. Now, again, your property taxes and your school taxes depend on which school district you live in, and it's multiplied by what's called a millage rate. You can find the millage rates easily available online for every township in Lancaster County and across Pennsylvania as well. So you can do the math yourself to figure out which township has the best bang for your buck when it comes to that millage rate. So if you're really concerned about property taxes in particular and you really want to fine tune those numbers, go ahead and try to find that millage rate sheet. They available online. Just Google Lancaster County PA millage rate of whatever year you're looking at. You should be able to find that sheet and figure out which townships have the lower millage rates, which ones have the higher. All right, next up on the list is that the fact that while there is outdoor re recreation by the bundles here in Lancaster area, there are certain types of outdoor recreation that are a little bit hard to come by depending on what you are into. If you're into fishing, depending on what you like, 
you may have to look outside of Lancaster County to find that. For example, I love to fish for largemouth bass. We really don't have a whole lot in the way of that available here in the Lancaster area. There's just not a whole lot of bodies of water here. There's a lot of creeks and streams everywhere across Lancaster County, but there's just not a lot of dams or reservoirs or anything like that. Uh, there's a couple across the county, but they're not very big. And so you have to look outside of Lancaster County for some of these bigger fisheries, including Marsh Creek Lake State Park over in Chester County, Blue Marsh Lake up in Berks County, just off to the north. Both of those areas can you know, suffice when it comes to largemouth bass fishing. But if you love to trout fish, if you love to smallmouth bass fish, it's actually a great area to be in. For example, the Susquehanna River is one of the best smallmouth bass fisheries in all of the United States. You need a flat bottom or shallow boat if you're going to navigate the uh, Susquehanna River heading up northbound from there. But around Lake Clark, which is right away where the water starts to dam up a bit, you can have some deeper regular boats and have outdoor recreation from jet skiing and water skiing, waterboarding, things like that, where you can have a good time going on on the lake but also have a chance to fish. Now, if you like to hike, if you like golfing, if you like to bike and do rock climbing, there's a lot of that here in the Lancaster County area. So it does offer that outdoor recreation in a nature sense. And then of course there's pickleball courts, there's tennis courts, there's all sorts of different things that are available to you here in the Lancaster area, depending on what you're looking for. So again, specifically calling out some fishing and general boating across lakes, you're just not gonna find a whole lot of that here in the Lancaster area. Another thing that drives me nuts about living in the Lancaster area and keeping in mind that Lancaster generally tends to be a little bit more of a conservative area, I'm not talking politically, just from a social sense, the hours are limited on bars and restaurants and there's not a whole lot in the way of nightlife here in the Lancaster area. Now, Lancaster City has a little bit more of that. The bars and restaurants tend to stay a little open a little bit longer and there are some nightlife scenes that you can go check out in Lancaster City. But besides that, there's really not a whole lot. So if you're into that, you're probably not going to find too much of that, at least here in the Lancaster area. Now, I'll say this. There, in terms of breweries, in terms of bars, there's a lot of options that you can choose from. You just gotta check the hours on these places. Sometimes they do have odd times that they close, whether it be a day of the week, whether it be a period of time during a day of the week. So just be aware of that. And if you get into some of those outlying locations, you can have restaurants where they're commonly closed after seven o'clock on a Sunday, or maybe they're not even open on Sundays at all or Mondays randomly. So again, you just have to be careful. You just have to be cognizant of that. My wife and I, when we're always thinking about something, if we're gonna get takeout, something like that, we always go to the hours of the place that we're thinking first, just to make sure that they are open. It's a minor inconvenience to have a place that is a great place to raise a family. It's a great place to be when it comes to uh, living. And, and again, the accolades are out there about Lancaster and how great they are. I've done a ton of videos on them. You can just like and subscribe to this channel, make sure and check out what there is in terms of that, those accolades for Lancaster. But all that to say, it is a great place to live. You just need to be cognizant if you're into that nightlife. All right, the last thing on the list and the negatives here about the Lancaster area, and this is for you if you're coming from places like New York or New Jersey, is that the friendly people that live here might be a little bit of a culture shock for you. Recently, we were working with some clients who were coming from the New York area, very sweet family, a couple of kids, and when they got here, they asked me, they pulled me aside and kind of asked me a weird question that had never been asked before, and it was, why is everybody so friendly? Why is everybody so nice? It's kind of weird. Putting it into context, they came from the Bronx in New York. Lancaster is not one of those places. It generally tends to be a little bit slower pace of life. People like to talk to each other. You go to the grocery store, clerks that are people checking out are talking to each other and people are writing checks at the same time. I mean, if you're a fast paced type of a person, you need a fast paced life, you are probably not gonna find it here in the Lancaster area. Now, again, there are some places, again, you get into the city, things are a little bit more fast paced, but the farther you go out from that, the more likely it's to be slowed down for you. The conservative and really religious background and history of Lancaster County, I feel has led to what we see here today. In fact, one of my clients formerly called Lancaster the South of the North. And I thought it was hilarious because yeah, you've got the Southern hospitality and the Southern attitude and the Southern way of life where everyone's you know generally very happy to help and lend a hand and those kinds of things. So again, that's a type of a lifestyle here in the Lancaster area that does contribute to people generally being kinder to each other. So if you're a rude person, if you're mean, if you're looking for a fast pace of life, it's probably not the place for you, or you might be a little bit culture shocked as you're moving out of an area like that and here into the friendly and lovely Lancaster, Pennsylvania. All right, that's it on the list. The reasons that you should not move to the Lancaster area, or if you are moving, the reasons you should be prepared and make sure that you're aware of these things before you make your move to the area. And speaking of that move, 
Let's have a conversation. My team is here ready and standing by to help you with your real estate needs. We are The Moore Group and we are based right here in the Lancaster area and you can contact us right here at the contact information on the screen, call, text, email, doesn't matter. We're happy to set up a Zoom call as well to get to know you a little bit better. We are helping people all the time who are moving to and relocating within Lancaster. We absolutely love it and we're ready to help you if that is your next move. So reach out to us and get to know us a little bit more. And of course, I also encourage you to check out our website, themoregrouplancaster.com. We've got home buyer, home seller resources. You can get to know the team a little bit more as well and see more videos about Lancaster along the way. It's also a good way you can reach out to us too. And if that's not enough, you wanna find out more about us, not what I'm saying about our team, then go to Google. Type in the more group and see what the reviews say about us. We've got over 55 five-star reviews and counting, and our clients love to work with us. We love to work with our clients. And if that's you, if you're looking to make that move, we want to be that person for you. We absolutely love it. We're fighting for our clients and we are helping them navigate this crazy real estate market that we are definitely seeing here in 2023. One last thing, please like and subscribe this video. Give the thumbs up. Let us know where you're coming from in the content in the comment section below. It helps the YouTube algorithm reach more people, helps us grow our business. So please do us a favor and hit that like and subscribe. We'd love for you to be along this journey, producing all of this free content about Lancaster and what you need to know about this area. Again, it's not all rainbows and butterflies, not, not every place in the world. In fact, there's nowhere that's a perfect utopia. And Lancaster is certainly great, but it's not perfect. And because there are some of those negatives, you need to be aware of that. And I hope we answered those questions for you. If you know about Lancaster and you have something to add, put them in the comments below. I'd love to see them. If you have something that's a negative about the Lancaster area, please do put them in there. Hope to talk to you soon and thanks for watching.